Welcome to another episode of the Motivate, Grind, Succeed podcast, the show that gives you 100% fluff-free, guaranteed, practical, and useful tips with every episode so you can live up to your true potential. If you're new to the show, welcome, and I know you're going to get some value from this week's episode. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. A quick favor to all who are listening, new or returning, if at any point in time of this episode you get some value, I ask that you share this episode with someone and go ahead and rate the show what you think it's worth. All right, with that intro out of the way, let's get right into this week's episode. What is going on, everybody? It is your host, Rashawn, and welcome back to another fantastic, value-packed episode of the Motivate, Grind, Succeed podcast podcast you read the title you 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 already know what's going on you already see us here sitting here we have alex bruckman on the show and if you all have no idea who this is you you all probably should by now alex he is an entrepreneur author executive coach and board advisor he has built scaled and exited companies in europe and canada and led client projects all across the world his areas of expertise are in strategy development leadership development and entrepreneurship and his passion lies in helping clients build profitable businesses rooted in purpose. I mean, what do I talk about on the show all the time? Always having your purpose. And this guy, he just, he oozes it, okay? If this is his thing, like we, we brought him on the show for a good reason, okay? He's based in Vancouver, Canada, and he speaks on topics of intentional strategy and entrepreneurship. And in his upcoming book, he presents a new framework called The Nine Elements of Organizational Identity, which helps people to build better businesses. He's a storyteller and he's got a huge academic background, which I'll let him go into because it's, it's very profound and very amazing. So without further ado, let's let Alex, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for the warm intro, Rashawn. Thank you. <laughs> great to be here. Oh, that, that's great, man. Thank you. Th- thank you so much for coming on the show. I really, really do appreciate you being able to come on and spend, spend some time with us and spend some time with the audience and be able for us to actually, you know, uh bring some value back to the audience because i said let's in, in do the, this yes absolutely because like I, as i said in the intro you know you're all about uh bringing in the purpose right we're all about uh making sure that our purpose is crystal clear it's set in stone and we're making sure that that is what is driving whatever that we're doing so without further ado like i said i usually like to as the audience knows i like to usually give the guests the floor so if you could go ahead and just tell us a little bit about yourself like what's your story start from like little alex up to where you are like right now you know just just (laughs) so we can kind of get a a feel for who you are as a person a little bit better little alex grew up in a rural area in um i would say central southern central germany close to the former um inner german border before germany was actually reunited um, in the 90s, beginning of the 90s. Um, it was an area that was, um, there wasn't too much to do. So little Alex got a skateboard and grinded up and down the sidewalks. That was basically <laughs> it. Um, until I then, at some point in time later, started my professional career um, as a radio journalist, which was kind of a dream job. Um, and to be able to score it was, I was super lucky. And it ignited my curiosity. I mean, what is a good journalist? A good journalist is someone who can ask deep probing questions to get answers that are revealing, that that show something new, some new information. So I stayed in that profession for some time, focused on music journalism, and then later were like, okay, that was fun. Now what? And um, <laughs> at some point in time, I, I have to, I, mean, I simply have to say, I didn't understand the world around me. Um, too well um, when it came to how how does politics, how does um, the economy work, and I, I just wanted to understand the world a little bit better. Especially, um, I was affected in, in the late '90s and early 2000s by the dot com bubble burst and some other like 9/11 and the economic downfall that came with it. Um, And I really didn't understand it properly. So I went back to university, actually, and studied business administration. And in that process, kind of started to travel the world a little bit um, with um, internships in the UK um, and in Mexico. And I did a semester abroad in Europe. Why? And like that travel fever got me bad. So (laughs) ever since I've tried to work and travel at the same time, which which worked 
for many, many years uh, very well. And um, well, after university, of course, I started my professional career or recommenced my professional career, if you want, but in a different role. So I didn't work in journalism anymore. However, I started with uh, one of the 10 largest um, media organizations in the world. So I stayed in that area to a certain degree in the media world. And um, after several years where I worked um, in the strategy realm, so I helped a CEO restructure and rebuild um, one of the larger business units of that uh, company, um, I realized that it's kind of fun doing strategy work. And I actually hired with a strategy consulting company. And in that time frame, an old friend of mine approached me and um, he was already running his own business at that point in time. It was a one-man show. Um, called Strategic Leadership, which was all about helping large corporations with their strategy and then adjusting their leadership development to the new strategy so that people actually knew what it is all about and how to implement it and find their role in it. Um, gotcha. I found this really intriguing and we joined forces. And um, yeah, since 2013, we've been building um, the company. It's, it's a thriving business, more than 40 trainers worldwide right now and coaches. Wow. And in, in that process, I also became an executive coach. So I did a coach education with CTI, Coach Training Institute, one of the big institutes in the world, which again was kind of brought me full circle back to how do you ask good probing questions? Because those are the questions that make people think, that make leaders think, that make um, businesses better. And um in yeah like three years ago when when we decided to move to canada my girlfriend and i who is originally from vancouver we said okay how do we do this um you run a business in germany so i said okay let's let's plan for it we handed over my responsibilities together with a with a company owner we created a nice transition plan and um two years ago we jumped over to canada with a uh, two month old baby and have Aww. been living here ever <laughs> since and enjoyed the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That, that's an amazing story. I'll absolutely love it. And then, like, like I said, I mean, and when you when you're talking about uh, asking the probing question, those are usually the ones that are the open ended ones, as, as you exactly. noticed. Those are the ones yeah. that you can't just say like, oh, how's the weather? Fine. Like you gotta, you gotta just say like, you know, you gotta give, give a little bit more, you know? Yeah. Like, so I, I really do, I really do, uh, definitely do, uh, appreciate that and, and do definitely understand where you're coming from with that. And like I said, it's very impressive. Everything that you're doing, the whole story, absolutely fantastic. And so I just definitely want to ask you then with that, um, since you have that purpose now, what continues to inspire you? Like with that, like, cause I know the purpose is like the, it's like if you can uh, relate it's like the analogy of like a tree right that purpose is like the root so what allowed yes. you to continue to grow the stem of that tree out into the branches and the leaves and to bring it to what it is now i, I see my career as like a typical career nowadays so um if, if you jump back like 50 years, people would hire with an organization and they would basically stay there for the rest of their lives. They would be their lifetime. Maybe at some point in time, they would switch careers, but um, it, and it's still today, a lot of people that I work with, um, especially in larger organizations, they've been there for 20 years and they will probably retire um, in that company. My career is very different. It's completely different careers. It's not even in the same area of expertise. You know, there are the journalism years, then there are the... Um, large global corporation years and then they are the startup and and entrepreneur years and in hindsight it always explains itself and it beautifully fits together it doesn't when you live your life because you can't only live it in one direction and explain it in the other so <laughs> this is true that that's a mate that's something that keeps inspiring me um just to be like, okay, what's the next step for me now? And then you go that step. You know it will make sense at some point in time. You will make sense out of it at some point in time. Um, I think what inspires me is this curiosity that I have in me, like to see what can I do with what I now know. I, I couldn't have done what I do now 10 years ago because I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the experience. I didn't have the curiosity to help other entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, startup founders to build their businesses not only with a profit in mind, but actually with, I want to have an impact on the world. I want to build a more just mm. society. I want to help protect the environment, not necessarily 
as the content of my business, but I want to leverage my business as a force for good. And mm. this is something I wasn't inspired by or aware of 10 years ago. I always was an environmentalist in a certain way, but I never thought to bring environmental work, social work, social justice, and the business world together. And in the past years, this whole movement of conscious capitalism, stakeholder capitalism, this just has been growing. The topic of ESG it has been around for some time now, and people start to understand it as more as just, let's say, um, numbers on a spreadsheet that you report um, to the stock market, right, or to, to the um, SEC. And it's, it's, it's just things that slowly grow and start to develop into something that you wake up in the morning and you're like, huh. I think now I know what I want to do with that. And, and, and that things all of a sudden are making sense in your head that that continues to inspire me. Oh, that's awesome. Absolutely great. I, I, I agree with that as well. That is that is true. Like, especially um, that's also kind of the reason why I started this podcast, too, and why I named it the way that I did. Right. Motivate, grind, succeed. Right. Because I believe that motivation is isn't the end all be all right. Like you go on YouTube, you see all these motivational videos, and most of them are just honestly what I feel is that they're just trying to make a quick buck because a lot of them are monetized. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm feeling like, hey, you know, like sure you can have the motivation but that motivation essentially eventually needs to turn into discipline right it was day in day out that's why i asked the question about what continues to inspire you because that is like comes into more of the discipline form factor right and so with that then that comes into where i call have the second name is the grind right because in the discipline it's just day in day out you might have to wake up early you might have to stay up late you might have to do things you don't want to do that that's the in the trenches grind work and then eventually when you do that you'll succeed at whatever you decided that you want your success to be to be seen as so i definitely do uh appreciate the answer and as definitely of in an, an inspiring answer so i appreciate it very very much thank you for that so uh, I do want to ask a, a question kind of a little bit sort of on the flip side now. So it's more of a, uh, if you weren't doing what you're doing right now, what, what, what is it that you would be doing? So like, if you don't, if you didn't have this business, if you didn't have like same life experiences and everything, but like, let, let's say, even if it was like, I don't know, like a nine to five job or whatever it is, just let's say you're just not doing this business. What would you be doing right now? I, I, I'm very clear on that. There's only one thing that I can ever do again, if I don't do what I do right now. I would buy a patch of land and grow my own vegetables full stop. That would be my nine to five. I, I would, nice. I would take care of my own little backyard, um, which I'm doing anyway, but I would, I would really, if, if I couldn't do what I do right now, I would just grow vegetables. I, I could never go back into a nine to five job. I've been mm. there for years. It's not what inspires me. It's not what is giving me, um, a feel, a sense of purpose. Um, because when you, when you were, your own boss for so long when you, I mean, I've been literally been an entrepreneur now for a decade. I'm kind of unemployable, I guess, because <laughs> I have my own ideas. And if you, when you are an entrepreneur and you have your own ideas, you turn them into reality. And mm -hmm. that just doesn't work in large corporations to the degree that you can do it as an entrepreneur. Um, and especially not in that type of, speed or velocity it's just not possible um and i i, I never want to go back um may, mm. I, I still work with large corporations but not as an employee i work as an advisor um because i can give them the honest truth in a way that i could never do that if i were an employee you know if mm. you're an employee there's politics at play and as much as you don't want them they are there and you ask yourself, do I speak up now? Is it worth it? Um, choose your battles, you know, all these things. Mm -hmm. um, no, I would grow my own vegetables and die a happy man. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big gay uh, uh, farmer slash planting of, of veggies person, but, I, but, my, but my father is. So, you know, that's definitely a, a big thing uh, for me. So you know what? There are books that you can uh, read. <laughs> <laughs> you try, try to convince me now. Nah, <laughs> my my girlfriend gave that book to me for Christmas and then some other nice books that I love. And it's, it's just growing vegetables. It's as simple as that. That's how you call books. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, that's the truth. The, the simpler the title, the better, right? It just gets yeah, exactly. across nice and simple. Absolutely love it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I agree with what you're saying, though, because honestly, like my Monday through Friday, I am working in a large corporation. I do uh, enjoy what I do. This isn't to like bash on you or anything about you uh, not doing it, but you know, now it does. And But I understand, right? Like the nine to five, it's not meant for everybody, right? Exactly. And so like, and so like right now I am working in nine to five, but I do enjoy what I do. So, um, but again, not to bash or anything, but like, you know, um, I do find a lot of the things that you are talking about when you talk about the nine to five and about the politics at play and then, you know, should you speak up, should you not speak up and things? Yeah, those, those definitely do show up hundred percent. And then especially when you have these big ideas of something that can be improved or something that, you know, you just have this, this brand spanking new idea and you're just like, oh man, I have this great idea. It's going to be great. Like this, this could be like a multi-million dollar idea. And then you make the mistake sometimes of bringing it up to your manager and your manager takes it to bring it to their manager and yada, 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 yada. <laughs> all next thing you know, oh, that's a fantastic idea. They bring you in all the meetings and then you, you think you got, you got something going down. And the next thing you know, they 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 go with the idea and then all you get is a oh thank you that's yeah it. That, that's like let, let me be very one. clear Rishan. i enjoyed working for a large corporation for years i had a job that i truly truly loved um i put in the extra hours without asking questions i really loved it it's when you realize only only when i realized as an entrepreneur how different my world can look like that i don't want to go back anymore so the, the time that I had in, those, in the large corporations, I enjoyed it. I learned a ton, a ton. So I can totally understand when people say, I love my job. I loved it too. So as long as you love it, stay there and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, there might be different times coming your way, and then it might look differently and you take different decisions. But hey, big corporations, there are actually some really awesome corporations out there that are totally on purpose that help their employees find purpose in work and combine it with their personal purpose. Um, I'm not bashing big corporations here, not at all. They have mm -hmm. their space as much as any other organization in the world. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely true. So, <clears throat> so I would say then with, with that, and then all the things that, that you share with us is one more, one more, just like preliminary question, I guess, before we really get into like the, the meat and potatoes, so to speak of this, of this episode. Right. So what is the biggest lesson that your path of life currently has taught you? Like if, like, if you're like, you know, talking, let's say you have this, this big audience of people and they're just like, Alex, what is the one big takeaway lesson that you've learned from your life? What would that be? I know it sounds like more early. <laughs> Hash kids early. <laughs> <laughs> I, I turned 44 this year with a two year old toddler, my first and only child, most likely. It's hard, man. Oh, the nights no. are just hard. And I promise you, if you're in your 20s, you might not have the funds to provide for a kid in the way you want to provide or as much as you would like. But the kids, the kid doesn't, the kid, kid just doesn't care. The kid loves you. The kid wants you. It doesn't care about the material things or the vacations, mm. but I can promise you one thing. Getting through those long nights is way easier in your twenties. Cause I know <laughs> 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 I spent my nights in my, in my twenties in clubs, DJing, and it was easy to get up the next morning and get to work, <laughs> but it's not that easy anymore when you're in your forties. So oh, the no. one big life lesson have kids early. <laughs> oh boy. Love it. <laughs> all righty. Awesome. Th thanks for all that information. So let's get into like the meat and potatoes of this episode, right? So, so since you are the, the professional here about uh, stress and strategy, correct? So you are able to help people manage their stress in entrepreneurship, as well as being an employee. So let's let's start more towards the uh, a little bit before the the employee side. So let's say you have someone who's like a college student, right? A college student, let's do your typical college student, maybe taking you know maybe sixteen to eighteen credit hours, and then they're also trying to work a part time job, but they're also trying to keep their grades up and maintain a social yeah. life, right? Like some some someone comes to you with this kind of a case study. What is what is the first thing that you would do to like help this person to say, okay, focus on this? to help improve your level of stress. So you're not so stressed out throughout the day, you're losing sleep, you're trying to trying to time manage. What's like the, what's some advice you would give to someone going through that? I think some of the most powerful tools that I use for corporations in the strategy space are in the same way applicable 
to your personal life. It doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're a college graduate, whether you are um, in your, whether you're a young professional or whether you're late in your career, maybe already. Um, and it's very, actually the, the, the most, the simplest tool that you can imagine is to ask yourself three questions. Where do I want to go with that? Why am I doing this? And does it make me happy? Mm. If you ask yourself these th three questions, um, it, it already tells you a lot about whether you should keep on doing what you're doing. So let's start with the first one. Um, where do you want to go with this? This is in, in the end, the question, if you translate it into corporate context, we often call this a corporate vision. How do you want your life to look like? If you are a college graduate or maybe in the, in the last years, how do you want your life to look like in two or three years? You can also start with five or 10 years, but that's kind of a moonshot. But if you focus on the next two to three years, you understand where you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in, in, in my case, when I was um, a student, I asked myself, will I ever work in that area? Do I, do I have to understand chemistry? No, I don't. Biology the same. No, I don't. <laughs> So I actually did, I didn't put anything into these courses. I focused all my energy onto the courses that I knew I'm totally passionate about that will be with me for the rest of my life. Um, and why, why could I do that? Because I knew what I want to do after graduation. I knew what I want to, where I want to, in which direction I want to go. So find out what makes you happy. What is it you're interested in professionally speaking, and then consciously select the courses that support that trajectory now your stress not necessarily comes only from 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 your from subjects or school or studying your stress might come from completely different angles of your life it might come from living in a home where there's constant fights over god knows what um, it might come from an unhealthy relationship you, you're stuck in so ask yourself also the question am i happy does my surrounding, do my surroundings support my well-being um, and take decisions? You better, if, if you're 16 years old and you're stuck in a relationship that you feel doesn't, doesn't help you, it, it feels really hard to end that relationship because you never know whether there's another relationship coming, whether the next relationship is maybe even worse. Mm -hmm. But hey, the one that you have right now is not helpful. So whatever comes your way, it's the right decision to end it. And you're 16 years old, and it might feel like the world for you right now. Trust me, when I was 16 years old, I was in the exact same spot, and it's hard. But those decisions that you take right now are the ones that open the doors for the happiness in the future. So you might want to take a hard decision now in order to open some of those doors. When it comes to the next question, so from why do I do this? The question, why do I do this, is the question of who are you as a person? Is, is that something that is true to your core? Are you doing this because you want to or because someone makes you do it or because you think that it helps you in the future? So it's really about understanding who you are. Don't believe everything that you think. Hmm. Again, don't believe everything that you think because our thoughts are so streamlined nowadays and and influenced by our parents by what our friends say by what we think is important because we see it all day on the social media or god knows what use your god-given ability to to think on your own and don't let yourself influence too much by other people be it parents be it friends know who you are and who you want to be and sometimes the things that you want right now ask yourself why do i want them do i want them because it's socially acceptable do i want to become the college football quarterback because that's the, the play the way to be or is it just because my father was it or my grandfather wants me to be it right so mm -hmm. ask yourself what do you want and then in the end if, if you've answered the first two questions the, th the third question does it make me happy kind of comes on its own. The answer comes on its own. If, if you are asking yourself why and where, you need to dig into the does it make me happy in the first place. So rather than making a, a, 
the worst thing that you could do is pick your career based on other people's opinions. Because you will live in that career for a long time. You, <laughs> it's a job you pick. It's, it's, I mean, you can change lanes, but hey, that comes with a price tag and it comes with a lot of stress. So you better make sure that you pick a career that makes you happy. And you might not even know whether it will make you happy in the first place because you have not never lived or worked in that career. But you can listen to your heart and you can start talking to people that are in that career and maybe volunteer and visit them and shadow them and just dig your toes into it. So make informed decision. That's what I'm saying here. Mm. Just don't make decisions based on hearsay or belief. Make decisions based on firsthand experience. Get your hands dirty, figure out whether it works for you, whether it will make you happy and then go for it. Mm, yes, good point. Definitely. Yes, I love that. And it also also as a quick side note with that too, like asking yourself those questions, it pretty much helps you find out your purpose, right? Because you, you already touched on that too, saying like, what is your vision, like focusing on what pushes you forward, right? That is, in other words, saying your purpose, right? So once you find what intrinsically drives you, it's almost like a, a no brainer, like, like, when, that's when the cliche quotes come into play saying like, Oh, when when you do what you enjoy, work doesn't feel like work. And I'm pretty sure you can probably attest to that, that you know, when when you're doing what you enjoy day in and day out, yeah, there's some days you obviously probably don't feel like it. But at the end of the day, you still wouldn't really be doing anything else rather than what you are doing. So so definitely, I do. I do appreciate that answer. That was definitely a really good answer. I was definitely taking some notes on that because that was that was really good, really deep. I, uh, <laughs> I must say I did. I uh, definitely have my own versions of those questions, but I did like the way that you worded them. Um, and that's also how I was able to figure out what I wanted to do with my life um, and the degree that I chose and the work that I'm doing and then also running this podcast. So so those questions definitely do help and assist. And there's not really much else I'd rather be doing, honestly. Um, similar to like you with the question I asked you earlier about uh, if I wasn't doing what I would be doing right now. Uh, I want honestly, my degree wouldn't be in engineering, but would rather be in the college of business because mm. the way that they think and then the, the logic that they go through and just the, the, the a vast amount of opportunity that they have with that degree. That's something that I was really, really intrigued by. Plus them being like, cause I'm a big, like, what's, what's the term? I'm, I'm, I'm not like a very detail oriented person, but rather a very big picture person. So a degree like that would definitely help me. So so just, just just piggybacking off of what you said there, like those are some really, really good questions to ask yourself. So so again, for the audience, if you didn't hear those questions again, it was where do I want to go with this? Why do I do this? And does it make you happy? So those are very good questions. Definitely write those down. I'm definitely going to be uh, asking myself in those questions uh, a lot more from now on. Let me add one more thing, Rashan. Um, oh, sure. Go when, ahead. I see my son right now, right? Two years old. And I remember when I grew up, people would always ask, what do you want to be when you're grown up? And that question was fairly easy to answer back then in the 80s and 90s, maybe. If anyone will ever ask my son, let's say in three or five years, what do you want to be when you're grown up? He can't possibly answer that question because the chances are that 80% of the jobs that he is able to take in the future, they don't even exist yet. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at universities and, and, and professions that come up uh, every year, I'm 100% sure that the stuff that he will maybe study or, 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 or educate himself in, and when he's a grown up or when he wants to start a career, that subject doesn't even exist today. So there's mm. so much new stuff coming up that it's basically impossible. So if you are out there and people are asking, what do you want to become when you're grown up? Don't let yourself feel pushed into just making a decision right now. Just tell them, I don't know yet. And that's totally <laughs> fine. You will know when the time is right. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is true. I definitely knew uh, quite a few people who, uh, when they were asked, I know I know it was a big thing in high school, at least when I was coming up in high school, they would always ask, especially when you get to like your junior and senior years, yeah. they would ask you a lot of times, oh, they were just honest. And it, it was it was terrifying for some people because they would just be going around the class, up and down the, the, the aisles of the, of the classroom. And they would ask, so what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do when you graduate? What college do you want to go to? They just bombard you with all these questions as if you already have like this, this 10, 15, 20 year plan already figured out. Exactly. And some people are still like, I don't even know if what I want to do requires college yet. But yet exactly. they're still feeling like bombarded to go to it. Now, of course, naturally, some things in life, they do require college, right? Like, I would prefer, 
you know, strongly prefer that if I'm going to be operated on by a doctor, I would hope that that person went to medical school, right? I would, I would sure hope so. They didn't graduate from Zoom University, right? I would exactly. definitely hope so. But other things that, you know, like entrepreneurship, that can arguably doesn't even require a degree, right? Some people, they don't, they don't even need a degree for that. Right. And some people who wanted who are very interested in maybe like social media marketing or social media managing, that definitely doesn't require a degree. Right. You can honestly just get some experience by working for other smaller corporations just right right out the gate. And then there you go. You have that experience right there. So it all goes back to what you're saying before. Like, what is your vision focusing on what pushes you forward? What makes you happy? What do you what do you find yourself doing a lot of times that when you're just left alone, if you could just do this one thing? it wouldn't feel like work and you wouldn't feel like it was a chore. You can just honestly lose yourself in doing mm. that thing. Right. So that is, that is definitely a, a very good perspective to have. So, so thank you very much for that answer. I really do, really do appreciate that answer. I really do feel like that resonates with a lot of the people listening. Uh, so thank you very much for that. So continuing on with that idea of, of stress, right. A lot of times we look at stress as a bad thing, right? Like we, mm. we always, there's always, there's, a million and three articles out there saying how to reduce stress, how to manage your stress, you know, how to some, sometimes there's like how to just make your life stress free to a certain to a certain extent. But with all this, all this towards stress, I did a little bit of research and I found out there's actually multiple kinds of stress Two, like in particular, right? There's you stresses and there's distresses. And when people are focusing on talking about their stresses, they're focusing what it seems like more on the distress, right? They're focusing mm -hmm. on, on the bad kind of stress. So mm -hmm. I just want to ask you again, so can we, can stress be a good thing, right? Like, is there a way that stress can like push you towards doing um, something better or something, you know, maybe push you towards finding your purpose even? Is, is that, is, is there a way that that can possibly happen? It's a difficult question. And it comes down for me to a definition of what stress is. So I'm not an expert in, in this field, um, what's, how, how you define stress. But for me, the term stress has a negative connotation. So I would, I would say for me personally, stress would never be the driver um, for something positive. Um, stress is for me the, the moment when someone takes me out of my flow, when someone wants me to do something that requires me to stop what I'm doing at the moment. That is a stressor. That is something that stresses me. Um, cause, and, and that's typically, that's typically not work. Work for me is not stress. Even the chores that are not necessarily the nicest ones for me, like preparing my taxes and stuff like that. Oh man. Um, it's not <laughs> what I enjoy, but Hey, it's part of business. It's mm. just part of it. And um, so I don't think that stress can be um, a motivator or something that drives you towards your purpose unless you are a person that is looking for the path of least resistance. Then you would probably try to avoid those stressors and that could spark innovation to a certain degree. Mm. Um, or make you rethink how you operate and how you work in order to reduce the stressors. But the stressors as such, what causes the stress, I don't believe that this can be something positive for me personally. Mm, okay. Yep. Okay. That, that's understandable. Yep. That made, that makes sense. <clears throat> I was just curious as to what your, your take on that was. Cause like I said, when I was doing the research and I was like, you stress versus distress, that's an interesting, interesting topic. And again, I didn't look too, too much into it, but I thought it was kind of an interesting, interesting to think, think that there could be like good stressors. So I don't know. I was, I was just curious as to what your take on that was. When I work, I have no problem to go 15 hours a day um, because I truly love what I do. I don't even consider it work in the sense that I need to do it in order to make money, in order to pay the bills. That's not what I do. I, I do what I do because I love it and all aspects of it, mo most aspects of it. And um, that we could call that a positive stress if you want. Because in the eyes of other people, working 12 or 15 hours a day is not necessarily healthy. Mm -hmm. For me, it's motivating. It gives me energy. It doesn't drain me. So I wouldn't even call it stress, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, I think stress is highly individual. What, what stresses you, what are stresses, how you deal with stress, how well you can cope with stress. There are people on this planet, the moment they feel stressed, they shut down. They kind of 
go into hibernation mode. They just need to relax and sleep because they are completely exhausted. Um, they can't manage stress at all. Totally fine for me. I mean, everyone is different. Mm -hmm. um, for me, stress is something that if, if I feel stressed, I get on my bike um, and just ride the highways, you know, um, a little bit of motorcycling can can release the stress faster than anything else for me. And <laughs> I can get back to work after that. Yeah, definitely. Very true. Yeah. So but yeah, thank, thank you for that. I appreciate that as well. Uh, I was just curious as to what your take on that was because I was I read it and I was like, hmm, this is like a good question I can ask my, my upcoming guest here because I'm not I'm not too much of a of a uh, of a of a uh, what was what's, oh god the word just escaped me um a a, a, a big like a, a big head of the information i don't know what yeah. the term is the word just left me um oh <laughs> yeah but uh okay so so we're gonna slightly switch gears from uh stress and talk about the other thing about strategy and why it's so important right um and so strategy it's it's a big word that gets thrown around right it, it's been thrown around since i was like in in high school even, and people are talking about, oh, you need to have a strategy on how to, on what you want to do with life. You have a strategy on how to complete this assignment. You need strategy, strategy, strategy. And I was like, okay, everyone's using this word strategy. It gets thrown around. And honestly, to me, I'm like, it's lost its meaning. So like, can you bring us back to what is the core meaning of strategy and how we can actually like implement? Well, well, let's hit on that part secondly. So what, what, what come back to the core meaning of strategy? What is strategy? It's, it's funny that we say that. I mean, this is exactly everywhere in the world where you look, you see that word strategy and no one really knows what it means anymore. Um, it's completely devalued because it's, it's an extremely valuable term. Um, understanding what strategy is, is super interesting because it all of a sudden helps you to differentiate between what's a strategy, what's a tactic. Um, there are two poles. There's strategic and there's operational, there's strategic and there's day to day. Mm -hmm. There's like working on the business and working in the business. These are extremely different. They, they require different skill sets. They require different ways of operating. And it's if you want to if you want one sentence, <clears throat> excuse me, strategy is an understanding of your key priorities and operating only on those in order to reaching the envisioned future for your business or your life. So your strategy is your chosen way to becoming what you want to be in the future as an organization, as an individual, as society mm. and anything else in there. These are the tactics, the operations that get you there. A strategy is a description. What you do in that description is not strategy. What you do in that description is you put your strategy into action by focusing on operational topics and putting them into work packages or into actionable, actionable parts. That, that, there's a huge difference between strategy tactics, strategy operations, strategy in the day-to-day, -day, and most people just don't get it. They use that term all over the place. Like if, if, I, if I hear the term strategy in its in plural, I already cringe. Um, I often hear people talk about their social media strategies. I'm like, mm. yeah, first of all, social media is not a strategy. It is a means to an end. It's not strategy as such. It's a part of a marketing strategy, if you want. And that marketing strategy sits in a bigger corporate strategy. And ah, okay. th the term is just being misused all the time by people who don't even have the, the concept of what strategy is or where it sits, they, they don't have this range of understanding um, that operations and tactics aren't strategy, but they use the terms like interchangeably because the term sounds cool, you know, um, <laughs> as you said, we need a strategy for this and a strategy for that. And I am guilty of using terms the wrong way as well, because I just, I'm not an expert in a certain field. So we all do this, but when it comes to strategy, um, as I said, I cringe all the time, but it's, hey, it's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, one, one day we'll all just be like, here is what strategy means. And then there, we'll all just have that one global I, I definition. Probably not going to happen, my friend. <laughs> oh, 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 man, I was trying to give you a little bit of hope, but all right. <laughs> oh, well, it's one of those like one one can dream, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 
so with that let me uh try to let's let's see how, how i can rephrase my question then since i don't want i don't want to have you cringe over there right <laughs> 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 so, so let, let's say somebody wants to, uh, let, let's say, again, let's focus on, on more of the, uh, uh, let's say the recent college graduate, right? And then they want to, uh, they, 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 they're looking for a place of employment or they're looking for a job that they want to do, right? Or, or let's say they don't want to do that. They, go, they want to go into entrepreneurship or something of that nature, right? What could that person do then to... Since you said the strategy is just part of like a bigger means, right? After they, so then would you? I'm trying not to make you cringe. <laughs> totally fine. Make question. me cringe. All I right. can live with All it. All right. Okay. All right. Cool. So what? What then? What strategy then would this person then have to have to have have to use? I guess. Yeah. To to find what they want to do, right? So let's say this person already has their their passion, right? They found what they want to do, right? And they, they know their beginning point, which is their passion. They know their end point over here, which, whatever that may be, right? Make a living out of it. Mm, okay. That, that, that might be the end point. So you have a passion and you ask yourself, is it even possible to make money with that? So that's your starting point. The moment you ask yourself this question, like there, there are jobs out there that have, have, I mean, when I was a kid, my parents were like, stop playing computer. That doesn't get you a job. Uh, wait a minute. There are some of the <laughs> some of the best paying jobs in the world are basically exactly that: play computer all day, play FIFA all day, play whatever. <laughs> there are entire leagues, right? Yeah. There are teams that are casted. They they train like professional sports people day in and day out, and they make millions. Mm -hmm. eh? Apparently, you can make money with playing computers. Thanks, mom. <laughs> um, so the, the point here is, if you if you find your passion, if you find something that you are truly passionate about. Don't let anyone else decide for you that this is not the basis for a job. That's the first mm. step. If you found your passion, ask yourself, how can I turn this into a living? And you will probably find a way, as weird as it sounds. Um, if you are passionate about the environment, how can you make a living out of that? Um, probably not by cleaning up beaches and bringing the plastic to the recycling, but there, there are ways, right? Mm -hmm. And if you want to help to prevent this planet from going down the drain, you better focus on something like um, the environment or society and ask yourself, how can I use my passion for creating a just society to build a job around that and make money with that? There are ways. And then we go back to earlier in our conversation and you ask yourself, how do I want this to look like in maybe three or five years? What is the money that I wanna make? How much is enough money for me? What, what do I want to do with my life? Um, and then you re, you re-engineer, reverse engineer from that vision, you reverse engineer how you can actually get there. What are the priorities that you need to focus on? If you're 15 years old and you're passionate about the environment, you better make sure you pick courses and you make career choices that support that trajectory. You might want to go in, enroll yourselves into law classes. If you want to fight for the environment, environmental law might be something you want to do. If you want to fight for the environment, engineering might help you. It's the question, how do you want to use what you learn after it, afterwards? There, you can basically use everything that you can study um, from becoming a, a veterinary. I mean, anything is worth something if you put it into the right direction but if you just do it because you think the job is fun that's too short-sighted if you do it because you know it's on purpose for yourself it's something you truly enjoy and you then build out those career steps or those steps towards that career in an intentional way it all makes sense all of a sudden and that's strategic thinking thinking first into the future asking yourself how should it look like in some time down the road and then reverse engineering your steps in order to create that future that is strategic thinking strategic acumen the ability to think and act strategically um it's basically the opposite of life just happened and i'm here because i don't know why <laughs>
Oh, yeah, it's true. Because I know, I know uh, going through my life, through definitely, uh, I, I definitely talked to those two sets of people. There are some people who just seem like they just have everything down packed. Like they know exactly what they want to do and exactly what time they want to get it done. And I'm just like, man, that, that's kind of impressive. Like, I mean, of course, if life throws a wrench in there and then, then they already know, they're like, oh, I already planned for that, I already planned for that, I already got all that stuff taken care of. And then there are other people who are like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> just have no idea what they want to do so but yeah definitely and the one what you said earlier definitely uh definitely struck home with me because when i was uh picking my degree as well i was i was asking myself what do i want to do what do i want to be right so at first when i was first picking my degree at first i thought i wanted to go into neurology right because it, it helped people and i could be a doctor i could just you know i could help as many people as i could with uh with, with our with their central nervous system and everything and be able to just assist people with those things and maybe people who are like paraplegics you know design something to be able to help them to to move again how they used to before they had their accidents and all those kind of things, right? And then I realized, well, I still want to help people, but at the heart, I love my technology, right? I'm a mm -hmm. big tech technology person. And I'm just like, man, I I would miss that if I just went straight into just the science. Yeah. But I didn't know what else there was out there. So I was just kind of following along this path and going along through high school, saying, I'm going to be a neurologist. I went to college for the first little bit and I said, I want to be a neurologist. But deep down, I was, something was just off. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to be totally happy with this, especially knowing that like after college is done, I'm not done with school yet. So I was just like, ah, oh, I'm not, I'm not feeling it too much. So then my freshman, no, my senior year of high school, I was in this class and uh, which was also taking place in the college that I, that I actually graduated from. Right. And then they told me uh, they were doing the same thing as I talked about before going around the room, asking people what they wanted to do. And then they asked me, Hey, uh, what do you want to do, Rashawn? I was like, I don't want to be a neurologist, right? The answer I was giving people for years. And then people said, okay, um, that, that's a cool idea, but have you looked into biomedical engineering, right? Like that, that, that's another field of you to be able to help people to incorporate technology. So they told me to look into it and I fell in love with it after doing that. Mm -hmm. I was like, yep, it, it's something just, I don't know what it was, but something clicked the moment I looked into it and I just could not stop researching. And I was like, all the different promise that there is, all the different paths that I can go down. It's just, it's almost like an endless, like amount of options of something that I can do if I get this degree. And I'm just like, yep, this is it. I'm doing this a hundred percent. Yep. So I just, so once I got into college, I was like, they're like, what do you want to do? Biomedical engineering just with without any hesitation whatsoever right biomedical engineering i mean that's why i got this this hat right there right so i graduated straight from it have have no remorse about it whatsoever and so now uh because because my end goal was to say hey i want to be able to help people in this this and that of a way as you said i reverse engineered it all the way back to just saying here's what i want to be able to do now and so ever that's since then, I've right there a great example of yes knowing where you want to go and then reverse engineering it Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what I did. And, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, engineering is rough. It, it was very, very tough. But every time I was going through it, and every time I had an exam, or I was just staying up late, and I had to pull all those late nighters, or even all nighters, I was just like, man, I know what I want to do with this degree. And I know where I want to have my end goal to be. I know how much I want to help people. I know what I want to be doing what I want to be able to create in the future. This this is the path for me. So it, it's going to work itself out. So when you were talking about that, that, that I just had to share that real quick because that hits home for me like really, really well. Cool. So, so yes, thank you. For I'm that. happy for you. Not everyone finds their passion early on. Yeah, and then and then what also I found just actually on now you got me going on spiels, man. <laughs> so so after that too with uh, with this podcast, so I found this is also what I also enjoy doing, right? Because I was given a lot of advice from from young that I realized a lot of people don't get to like a lot later on, right? And so I was like, what is the best medium that I can use to bring this back to the people who really need to hear this kind of information? So I figured, why not start a podcast? That, that should be pretty fun, right? And so ever since I started that, I mean, since what, 2020, I've been doing this podcast and then it's just been, it's just been going up and I've just been enjoying it ever since. So that's, that's more of my passion. So going back to what I said earlier in the episode, hey, I mean, if I could be doing anything else, i I don't know what else I, I would be doing, honestly. I'd probably just be in the College of Business, but I would definitely probably still be doing this podcast. So good yes, for what you. you said, <laughs> so what you said definitely, definitely does hit home for me. So so yes, thank thank you for that for that uh, answer to the question. So so I know we're starting to get close to the to the end of the episode here. 
So uh, I just want to ask you again. Uh, well, first, I want to say thank you for coming on to the show. But before we end off, uh, is there one last little tidbit of information you want to leave the audience with? Uh, just one last like little um, like, oh, if you got nothing out of this, like 49 minutes that we've been talking, <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you want to be able to take from this episode? I, I guess those who didn't get anything out of it until now, they are not with us anymore. So they wouldn't <laughs> listen to that <laughs> last piece of advice. But hey, we can try. <laughs> um, well, maybe they, hey, maybe they fell asleep. We don't know. They just, they yeah, just hey, so wait, just in case you, you just woke up again and you're, you're, you're thinking, what do you want to do with my life? I actually went to university when I was only 28. So I had this whole career, this other career in radio journalism before that. And it took me another five, six years into the corporate world before I actually realized what I wanted to do with my life from a professional standpoint. And I wasn't, I was in my early thirties before I even realized that. And that's not even old. I mean, Facts. You are still like <laughs> 40 years before you can call yourself old or should yourself maybe call little, a little bit elderly. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Um, some of the greatest entrepreneurs in the world actually founded their businesses when they were beyond 60 years of age. So just because you are now maybe 16, 18, 20 years old and you think, I just haven't life figured out. I just haven't figured out what I want to do with my life. Everyone else around me seems to have figured it out. I can tell you a little story. One of my best friends was like that. Everyone thought she had completely figured it out. Her life looked just perfect, streamlined. Everything just worked perfectly for her. Now she's in her mid thirties and she's super depressed because she lived the expectations of other people. She didn't mm. live her own expectations and it's hard for her to get out of that now and, and recalibrate herself and re engineer her life, which she's doing. Um, and I'm extremely proud of her That's good for, her. for yes. realizing that where she is does not, will not make her happy for the rest of her life. So just because you don't have life figured out does not mean that you should succumb to other people's opinions and just go for whatever the world feels you should do. Give yourself the time, fake it till you make it. And at some point in time, you will realize what makes you happy, what you want to do with your life. And then you will feel this incredible energy inside you that will make this a reality. Um, and, and then go for it full force. So for me, it was in my early 30s. For other people, it's in their early 20s. Some people have that in their teenage years and other people sadly have this late in life. But mm. hey, as I already said in the beginning of this episode, life only explains itself in hindsight. If you find your true passion in your 40s or your 50s, the experience that you will have gathered up until this point will help you make this venture even more successful. You could have never done that in your 20s. So, hey, trust the process. It will come to you. Don't force it. Mm, yep, yeah, that that could definitely go on a t-shirt. Trust the process. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I might, I might make a t-shirt about that one day. Just wear it. Like, trust the process. Alex Brockman. Just write down a t-shirt. Just <laughs> promote you just like that. <laughs> I've been saying that for a long time. It should go on a t-shirt at some point in time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go perfect all right but again alex thank you so much for coming on the show thank you for sharing your wonderful wealth of knowledge with everybody listening but before we close out the show i want to give the floor to you one last time what is your cta your call to action what do you want people to do now that they have all this information let's say they want to connect with you or they want to find out more information about you where can they go to find just out just check out my website um alex the it's all there all social links are there you can find me on linkedin and um instagram but again alex the there is tons of free stuff available on my, on my website if you want to get your head around the topic of business strategy if you want to use those tools to figure out your own career um you can also do that just exchange the term business with the term life and mm. you're there so there's tons of podcast episodes there that you can binge listen um and all kinds of stuff if you want to hop on a free call with me that's also an opportunity to do that i'm glad to just help you figure out asking you some coaching questions no strings attached 
So alexastrategist.com. Mm, awesome. I'll definitely leave that link in the description below uh, for those of you all watching on YouTube, but for all you all listening as well, you also will see that in the description. So when you get a chance, if you're driving right now, please don't put that into your phone. Do it after you find somewhere to park. But, but if you're watching this, then sure, go ahead and visit that link and check Alex out on, on those on those social media. So thank you so, so much, Alex, for coming on the show. I greatly appreciate the time that we spent together, and it has been very, very fun. I hope you enjoyed your time here as well. And everybody who's listening or who's watching, thank you all for coming in, and thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. See you later. And with that, I'm going to bring this week's episode to a close. Thank you so much for tuning in. But before you go, I do have a couple of requests for you. Number one, please subscribe to the show if you found it useful and be on the lookout for new episodes every Monday. Number two, leave a review of what you think of this week's episode. And number three, don't forget to follow me on social media. All the links to that will be in this episode's description. Also, don't forget to always implement the steps that you hear in order to get the most bang for buck out of each and every episode. A goal without the necessary steps planned and taken is just a dream. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all in the next episode.